you've probably heard this numerous times already that remaining focused in building a niche is way too important for a small business and yet you're actually thinking and believing that I'd rather do everything than take the risk of focusing on one specific area. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about, again, that particular niche, how you can create that and still continue to be profitable. Hi, my name is Tabish Bibikar and I work with entrepreneurs of software companies to help build the scale in their business really fast. So I'm going to talk about uh, a couple of experiences that I've had while working with entrepreneurs and I've, I've had, for example, web development uh, companies that reach out to me for support. And the number one challenge that they face is customer attraction. They talk to me about how they know all of the technologies and they've actually spent a huge amount of time learning and acquiring newer skills on an ongoing basis. They're very confident that they will be able to deliver everything that the customer really asks for, but they're not really specialists in one specific area. They've worked and, and have delivered services into numerous customers already, but now the next level jump is becoming really tough. And that's exactly what I tell them that that's the problem. The problem is you're spreading yourself too thin. That's exactly the problem that bites you back after a couple of years. You've now spread so thin that you're not really an expert in one specific area and people who have leveraged your services in one specific area are not going out and bringing other people who will also reach out to you for solving exactly the same kind of problem. I'm going to share with you very simple five steps that you can use to start implementing the development of a niche in your business because creating a niche means you're going to get so good at what you do that other people are going to reach out to you on their own. Your business will spread by word of mouth. You'll be clear on what is it that I need to communicate in my marketing messages that's going to attract as many people out there as possible who have exactly the same problem. So let's get started. The first step that you need to do is look at what is it that you're really good at or what is it that you've really enjoyed doing in the past. Look at all of the history projects that you have executed and it's going to be very difficult for me to accept that you've really enjoyed every single project. Okay, I'll give you an example. I have a customer who's uh, in the ERP space and he act his history has been that he actually worked for a branded ERP organization and then for a number of years was an expert at it and then he stepped out supporting and becoming a partner with that particular organization. He now does the same branded ERP implementation, consultancy and customizations all put together for other companies. When he started on his own, he actually realized that he, he, he reached out to, uh, with some of the connects that he had, he reached out to a manufacturing company and he worked for them. He then worked, uh, you know, he was then uh, approached by an e-commerce organization and he then worked with them and so on and so forth. And after a couple of the initial years and, you know, ERP takes a little longer time, for the complete implementation. So by the time he was actually out of the first slot of projects, he realized that he didn't have a pipeline built at all. And he didn't have something to call out that he can now say that I'm a real expert in this particular area. When I did the exercise with him to look at which were the projects that you really enjoyed doing and your team enjoyed doing, what were the kind of people that you really resonated with? Because if you resonate with a customer and you then give them your best shot. You're then going to be able, it's, it's a lot more easier to attract other customers of similar nature. He realized that the e-commerce customer and the work that they had done for the backend logistics was something that he really enjoyed. His team had enjoyed as well. And he said, Tabish, you're right, actually. I don't think I quite really enjoyed working in the manufacturing space and doing all of the production and the MRP implementation, but I quite enjoyed working with the uh, e-commerce space. And we said, well, let's park that thought and look at whether we could actually start to build this particular segment to be your constant niche. So the first step is 
look at what you really enjoy doing and what are you, and it's possible that what you really enjoy is also something that you're really good at. The second step to take is consciously look at what's the problem that you solve for the customer. What is it that you're really solving for the customer? Okay. If you look at the same example, uh, the ERP one that I gave you, ERP really solves number of problems and the problem is different for different industry. Most people come back and say that the problem that an ERP solves is give you access to data on the click of a button. But that data really means different things for different people and it solves different kind of problems. Do that deep dive to really understand what is it that I really enjoy doing. When I talked to the customer, uh, my customer was in the ERP space. What he said was, when he worked with the e-commerce customer and really enjoyed working with him, he was actually helping him solve the problem of getting the order fulfillment out really fast to their customers so that they can create an amazing experience for their end users. So the problem that he was solving was from order receipt to order fulfillment and the actual door delivery of that retail product that the e-commerce site was selling. They wanted to create, you know, an Amazon kind of feeling, an Amazon delivery experience and that they really, really enjoyed working on. And that's the problem that they were trying to solve, create a customer centric uh, back end that was giving an amazing experience to the customer. So it's a big problem to solve, right? If you want to become the next Amazon, it's an uphill task and there are many, many, many people who would want to do that. So that's the problem which this customer of mine chose that they would like to focus on and would love to continue to solve. So that's the step number two, okay? Look at the problem that you solve. Step number three, look at how profitable is this problem that you're trying to solve. When I say profitable, there are two ways to look at it. One, is there enough number of people who need this solved? Or if there are less number of people who want this solved, is it big enough a problem for you to solve that will give you the money that your business aspires for its growth? If the, if the answer to any one of them is yes, then yes, that's a great space that you should be in. Now look at the example that I gave you earlier, okay? We looked at the e-commerce backend logistics uh, ERP deployment that we wanted to do. And yes, there are so many companies that are launching their businesses uh, on the online platform and all of them would definitely require uh, the backend logistics to create them as a winner. So if the business that you, or the problem that you have chosen is large enough, or has enough people wanting to give the value that your business will require for their growth, then that's an amazing space. So that's your step number three. Step number four, do a little bit of research on your competition. Look at the other people out there and what is it that they're offering, which is different from what you have. Can you spot something in between? For example, there could be some people who have great development skills on the back end, but their UI kind of sucks. Is that something that you can bridge the gap and build your own UI skills in the, in the organization and change the experience that you can give to your set of customers? Or it could be that there, is, there are some uh, you know, competitors whose customer service is not very good. Is that something that you can backfill? So do some sort of research to find out where would you fit in and what is the offering that you would want to call out as the specific niche in your area. That's step number four. The last step is be willing to test and measure. By test and measure, I mean go out there, talk to, for example, the e ERP e-commerce example I gave you. Go out, reach out to numerous other e-commerce places Create a database, focused approach, create a database of every single e-commerce company that you think is part of your target, reach out to them. You could probably create a list of every single e-commerce that's there on the planet. It doesn't have to be geographically uh, differentiated. So create the database, give out your marketing communication, test it out and see what's coming back. So do your test and measure and decide whether that's going to be a real good niche for you to be in. So those are the five steps. First step, look at what do you really enjoy 
solving. What is the problem that you'd like to solve? What do you really enjoy doing with the customer? Number two, articulate specifically what is the problem that you solve for the customer. Step number three, determine how profitable this problem that you'd like to solve is really. Step number four, research your competition. And step number five, be willing to test and measure. These are the five steps. Do reach out to your coach and explain to them that you'd like to go ahead and step by step implement all of this in your business. If you like this video, please do like and share. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you get more of such videos where I keep sharing simple tips that you can go back and build scale in your business. Thank you for watching. Bye. Thank you.